For the first presentation, we would like to introduce Tom Moran. So please, welcome. Hi, everyone. You may recognize me from conferences that happened many years ago. So, my name is Tom, Tom Moran. I work for a company called Correct Research. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about user experience and the battle for consumers. So, three main points. This will be quick. UX is really important. UX is important because it drives your business. And that means that you, your technology investment in your UX is critical to making your business successful long term. Everyone agree? Excellent, that's good. More slides, I'm going to have slides. What matters to consumers? This is what your consumer sees. There's a lot of discussion about, you know, the customer experience in general. You know, you have shops, you have to be good on the phone if something falls over. But if you're doing your job pretty well, 99.9% .9 of your interaction with your consumer is this. And so the question is, how do you make this better? Because this then drives all of the KPIs that drive your business. This is the UI. And that's the, that's the thing that you see. Behind the UI is the stuff that drives it. And that's the broader discussion for today, which is the UX, the user experience that drives the user interface. And this is important because while this session originally, once upon a time, would have been about connected devices and how smart TV is important and mobile phones are important, the reality is that the devices are collapsing together and the user interface and the user experience is across all devices and it has to be uniform and it has to be consistent and it has to be clean. Why does it have to be good? Because everybody has a UI. Everybody has some kind of direct interaction with customers. If you're a channel or a content owner, if you're a broadcaster, if you're a pay TV operator, if you're a content app, if you're a channel aggregator, I mean, there's all kinds of different types of companies now. And, this, and there's a whole spectrum of different positions in the market. Why is that important? Because there's a lot of nesting of apps under apps. So you can have Samsung Smart TV that goes into a Sky app or a, that goes into a Netflix app and things like that. So the question then becomes, and this is, was picked up really well by Richard on the first session in this room, how many clicks away from your consumer are you? If you're on the home page or if you own the home page, then you're zero click, you're kind of front and center. And as you have to go out of, you can have, you can have the slides, you don't have to, unless you post them. Right? As you have to go out through different interfaces, into different apps, um, a point that was brought up on uh, Jonathan's panel earlier, I forgot what series I'm watching and what app it's in. I have to go out of this app and into that app and out of it. What if it's on, what if one app is on your smart TV and another app is on your set-top box and it, you know, clicks and clicks and clicks and you navigate your way into frustration. Consumers don't like to be frustrated. They like things to be simple and clean. They want as few interfaces as possible that give them everything. I do, I'm a consumer, this feels true. So you want to be front and center, zero click, you want to own the UX, and then everybody else will come onto your platform. So the user experience is your business. Yes, there's all kinds of distribution technology. You can talk transcoding and asset management, and I do frequently ad nauseum. But ultimately, if you have a consumer-facing business, they're your customers. 99.9% .9 of your inter interaction with them is through your UX, through your user interface. Therefore, that's your investment point. And users have higher expectations about that experience now because there are so many different variants of it and there's so much improvement upon it that you have to be the best at everything. So you have to have a really good integrated experience, you have to have unified search and discovery, you have to have simplified transactions and billing, you have to do all of those things and that means you need to invest in app aggregation and metadata, deep linking and control of the customer data and a, var a variety of other things. This is just a small subset of things that people expect and how you would respond to them as a technology provider. So, another way of looking at this, what's the architecture behind all of the stuff that drives your user experience and your user interface? 
there's on one side lots of data and analytics, on the other side there's all of your devices, which are kind of comp compressing and collapsing into a relatively small number of operating systems. And then in the middle there's all of this stuff that's technology and traditionally exists in kind of siloed fragments, one for your set of boxes and one for you know your mobile experience or your OTT platform or whatever it happens to be. And then things like billing, subscriber management, storefronts, marketing, how you deal with advertising, which was brought up as well, are you going to do pre-roll ads or post-roll ads? How are you going to annoy people? Um, the logic of your app experience and your user interfaces, and personalization, recommendation, all kinds of other things. And things like aggregation kind of sit across this as you pull things together. Aggregation, in many ways, is the, um, the way that you bundle this stuff and offer it to a uh, content app um, as, a, as a storefront for them, as a, as a shopping mall for them. So this stuff is what you have to invest in. These things are individually complicated, and they drive your KPIs. So I can, you know, we can come up with lots of lists of KPIs, but this is why you do your business as an operator, as a platform. You need to make sure that you convert subscribers, you need to make sure that they use your service, and you need to make sure that they don't leave you. So all of these things drive those KPIs, and they do it in various different ways by implementing these kind of functions. So for example, you can have targeted promotions in advertising, and if you do that well, you can increase your conversion rate of you know, unpaid um, AVOD users to SVOD users. You can do really good um, personalization recommendation, and you can increase the consumption of those consumers and drive down churn. So there's all kinds of good things that you can do by implementing technology and the features of that technology to drive your KPIs. So I hope everyone is now convinced that the UX is very important. So the question then is, how do I buy it? And if you're a vendor, how do I sell it? How do I talk about this stuff that drives the business and what matters? As a technology buyer, and so the converse is true for a technology vendor, you should be buying things in a particular way. This is our view of the market. This is how to make better technology decisions. Firstly, you should be focusing on solving specific and particular problems rather than trying to boil the ocean. There are very specific features that do very specific things, and you should focus on doing those things in order to impact the KPIs that matter to your business. You should be deploying products and services that are modularized, modularized and independent of each other so that you can churn out products and features that don't work and innovate quickly and stay ahead of the market. And you should use cloud-native architectures so that you can do that cheaply and quickly and benefit from all of the scalability of cloud and service providers that sit on the cloud. You should buy things that scale well with your business, that are self-service and SaaS-priced, and you should use vendors that work well within your roadmap and meet the expectations that you have of them. So this is our kind of short list of how you should make procurement decisions about all of that stuff. And so the next question might be, why don't I just hire a dev team and do this in-house? And the answer would be, you could, absolutely. It's expensive to do things in-house sometimes. And in many cases, it's actually about the same cost to do something in-house as it is to buy it in from somebody else because you know, vendors like to make their money and they'll make as much as it costs you to do it in-house in many cases. So there is another reason not to go out and buy a dev team build, you know, to build things in-house and that's because if it takes you longer to get to market, then you lost all of the money that you would have made if you had gone there first or faster. And you don't make it back. You can't go and ask subscribers that you get in the future to pay for the subscription that they didn't have in the past. So getting to market fast with new features, with even incremental changes, that feature grid that we saw earlier, if that makes a difference and drives down your churn by a fraction of a percent, you make more money and then it accumulates over time. This is from a graphic that we're uh, presenting on a webinar on June the 8th, back in the little corner there, um, with Ampere Analysis and Xperi. So please join us for this in a few weeks. Uh, there's a lot more where that came from. But this is an interesting story because even if you don't agree with the strategic imperative of, you know, I think, I think Jonathan, you almost said sell your soul to the devil, sell your soul to the big guys, I think was your phrasing. <laughs> Um, which was bound to come up at some point in these days. But even if you have a, a, a real issue with doing that, 
I can give you a monetary reason why it might be the sensible thing to do. You get to market faster with functionality, and then maybe this accumulates with additional functionality because they can innovate faster than you, they can deploy more features faster than you. How do you implement all of this stuff? So what are the kind of the key takeaways from this? What should I use as my rubric for making technology decisions? Make sure that your content, your service, your capabilities are easy to consume. That's the most important thing. Make sure that you get to market fast, you innovate fast, you, you move your feature and capability set on fast. So this kind of fast fail concept that comes out of Silicon Valley 20 years ago, that's important now, today, in the minutiae of how you deal with these product roadmaps, because if you can't change the color of your, you know, the button on your interface or something that was brought up at some point earlier today as well, if you can't do that fast and it matters, then you lost all the opportunity in that intervening period. Make things simple, make things quick, make your content and services unique where possible, and use the technology partners that work with you, and partnership came up a lot in the last discussion. And, of course, underlying this is data. Make sure that you control your data, you understand your data, you have the ability to do things like deep linking, metadata, um, enrichment, all of this stuff, because it does really matter. Thank you very much. I think I have my time, kind of. We're 10 minutes late anyway, but, um, yeah.